I'm going to be talking about some changes to some tax rules which are called IR35. Those changes are coming in in April next year for rules to do with income tax, PAYE, national insurance, where companies and businesses engage workers on a sort of contracting basis. It could affect certain companies in the private sector. And this is what HMRC have been looking at for a few years. They're sort of getting a bit fed up really of potential tax avoidance. It's really to plan ahead, to think, do I need to look at this before next April and what steps do we need to take? They're applying some changes which were actually introduced to the public sector in 2017. It's relevant if your business is using contractors, workers who provide their services through a personal service company or some other similar kind of intermediary. You might hear the phrase umbrella company, managed service company, personal service company. So the situation. You'd have a client, which would maybe the businesses or authorities which you work for, and you're buying in some services from an individual, from a worker. And as we said, that worker is providing their services through a personal service company. The worker takes the money out of his or her company, maybe pays themselves a very low salary, extracts quite a bit of the remuneration through dividend, and that can save some income tax and national insurance for the worker and his or her personal service company. Dividend income tax can often be lower rates than PAYE and then no national insurance on a dividend. So this can be and has been quite a tax efficient strategy for some individuals who just want to provide their services to a range of clients and not necessarily want to become employed by one client. What these tax rules have done over the last couple of decades is to say, okay, if we put a big red line through the personal service company, and if we looked at the relationship between the client and the worker, would that be an employment relationship rather than a self-employed relationship? And if the answer is yes, and it's an employment relationship, then IR35 applies, it bites. And the revenue then can use this legislation, as they have done over the last nearly 20 years, to say, okay, there'll be some PAYE and some national insurance due on this. It could mean that the tax risk falls on the person who engages the worker or the contractor. Whereas up until now, that tax risk would have fallen on the contractor and his or her own personal service company. The general position until next year, the client has been fine just to go, okay, that's the worker's problem. I'm not really bothered about it, it's fine. It may be an underlying employment relationship. The revenue may use this IR35 legislation and want some PAY and NI. It's been the worker's problem and his or her personal service company. So what's changing? If there is this deemed employment relationship between client and worker, then the PAYE and NI burden shifts. It goes back up the chain. It goes from the personal service company to the private sector client who is engaging the worker through this arrangement. There's gonna be a few exceptions in the legislation when it comes into play for small businesses, small companies. So hopefully it's not gonna be everyone, but it is gonna be a big change for the private sector who are using these sorts of contractors, who in turn use something like a personal service company. If you are a small business, the PAY and NI will still be the responsibility of the worker and his or her own personal service company for what is small in this context. Turnover, not more than 10.2 million per annum. Balance sheet total, not more than 5.1 million. Number of employees, no more than 50. If the consultant, the worker, is just providing their services personally, and so they're self-employed, then IR35, these rules don't actually apply. So IR35 is just relevant where the worker is providing his or her services through some kind of intermediary, like a personal service company. If there's a third party in between who pays the, the fees to the worker, the consultant, for example, an employment agency, the PAY and NI will be due from that agency, that sort of in-between party, the fee payer. Who decides if we have a deemed employment relationship? So we've got our situation here, worker, personal service company, end client, or maybe an agency in between as well. The responsibility to decide if this applies 
will be with the end client. So from next April, if you work in the private sector and you're not in a small company exception and your business is engaging contractors who are using personal service companies, then you have to check. You have to look at the employment status and think, is this actually a deemed employment relationship? You must inform the worker and if applicable, the agency who's in this chain of contracts here, whether the engagement is caught. But my understanding so far is that if you're the client and you don't do this, you're in this ballpark, but you don't do the determination status and the revenue look into it and say, right, it is actually an employment relationship, then the client at the end will have the PAYE and NI responsibility. The worker can challenge and the client would have 45 days to respond. HMRC will, if they did a look at this situation for any of you, they would look at the picture in the round. It's not that you necessarily have to meet absolutely every single test in the primary and secondary ones. They would look at no one test will necessarily be determinative of whether it's employment or self-employment, but it's looking very much at the picture in the round. There is an online HMRC employment status indicator tool. You can find this on the HMRC website, sometimes abbreviated to CEST. Answer those questions and get an initial indication on employment status from the revenue. So something to watch out for, for April next year, and it's always good to plan ahead.